Okay, so we are on to chapter 8, which is numerical methods, and you will see that exercise A, B, and C are all part of AS, and then randomly exercise 8D is part of A2, maybe because it's to do with integration, um, and I'll do some exam questions kind of spread throughout this rather than at the end of this whole playlist. So basically what we're going to be looking at in the first three exercises are these three methods that we have, and they're for solving differential equations. We've got Euler's method. It looks like it says Euler, but we actually say his name is Euler. Um, and that's where he, the, the number E is also called Euler's number as well. We've then got the midpoint method and the second order method. And they pretty much always, pr well, they always print these within the questions when you need to use them. So you don't need to memorize these, but I've got them here just as reference for you. Unfortunately, though, Simpson's rule, when you get to the A2 stuff, they don't give you this. So it's literally just a memory test, which I always find really frustrating with maths because it's just, it's useless. This isn't something you would memorize. This is something you would always look up. Anyway. We're going to think about what we're going to do with these first three methods here, and it's all about solving differential equations, and we're going to be using a numerical method to do this. So what I've said here is that some differential equations, and by the way, this is all the kind of backdrop to it, okay? This isn't stuff you have to know or be able to understand, um, but it's kind of telling you about the why that these things are working and almost like the motivation for doing this. So getting back to what I was just saying, some differential equations can be solved easily. For example, if dy dx is 2x, then we know that y is equal to x x squared plus c. Because if you differentiated this, y would become dy by dx, x squared would become 2x, and obviously the plus c would go. So this is a differential equation, and the solution to the differential equation is that y is equal to x squared plus c. And I said, but what if the differential equation was unable to be solved analytically? And when we solve something analytically, that actually just means kind of using algebra. So here we, we basically integrated both sides. Well, this is where the numerical methods of the chapter title is going to come into play here. What I've done is I have drawn a vector field plot, also called a tangent field or sometimes called a compass point diagram. I have drawn the compass point diagram of dy by dx equals 2x. And I've just taken this from a website called Wolfram Alpha, uh, which is an amazing math website. You probably have come across it already. And in this particular vector field, each blue line represents the gradient at various coordinates for the x, y coordinates that we've got. In other words, it's the direction that the line is moving in. So, for example, if we have a look at this little point here, we can see that the gradient of the line, if it were at this point, would be going in that direction. And understandably, when x is equal to zero, which is obviously this vertical line that we've got here, you can see that all of the lines have got a zero gradient because the gradient of the line is the x coordinate multiplied by 2 and x was equal to 0 along that line. And I want you to just think to yourself, what shapes can you see for this vector field plot? Well, the shapes that I can see lots of is I can see lots of curves, but to be more specific, I can see lots of paraboli, which is the same thing as saying parabolas. It's just the plural uh, people kind of use both of those. So for example, I can see there's like a parabola if I was going to draw one kind of like this. You can kind of see how it's sort of flowing in those directions. But if I was going to start much lower down, you can see how if I was to join all of the flow lines that we've got, I've got these kind of para parabolas or parabolas like this. And you could keep drawing loads and loads of different ones of them, and that's because of the fact that y equals x squared plus c. So the plus c is referring to the fact that the parabolas could be in all kinds of different places depending on where you might start. And so this is like why the solution to dy by dx is x squared plus c. You can almost visualize like all of those shapes happening all at once. So let's try and do a couple more of these just to kind of explore the concept that we've got here. And I've said using a few different start points, trace out the solutions to the following differential equations. So this differential equation, we can't solve it in an analytical kind of way. We can't integrate this. And it's the same for this one that we have over here. So instead, we're just going to play a kind of a like a bit of an interesting sort of start to this. You know, where would the solution to this go if we were going to pick different start points? So what I mean by this, I'll just do one example. If I pick this as a start point, it looks like all those gradients are kind of sending it off in this direction and it kind of begins to curve off. Whereas if I picked something, say, down here, it looks like it's kind of coming up and then along. It keeps going along for a while and as it keeps going, it seems to kind of bend in that direction. 
And if I pick something maybe over here, it looks like it kind of goes up and then along and then it kind of shoots off. So depending on where you start, you get quite different kinds of curves for this. And let's try it for this dy dx equals sine x plus cos y. Let's say that I picked somewhere here. It looks like it kind of comes up. And then that gradient looks like it's beginning to send it down. Looks like it gets sent up again. Maybe it kind of comes around like this. It's kind of hard to tell exactly where they go. I'm going to pick a different start point. I'm going to pick a random start point, not even at the edge. That looks like it's sending it down here. And as it moves along, you can see how the gradient at various places is going to kind of send it in all of these different kinds of ways. And so depending on the start point, you could generate what the curve might look like. And if we know a start point, that's kind of basically the gist of what's going to happen in this particular topic. We're going to start with a particular given coordinate. We'll find out the gradient at that point, and we're going to let it send us off into a different direction to try and come up with another point, which is effectively drawing out a curve. We never do any of these kind of vector plots. We never do any kind of drawing. It's just a kind of concept that I wanted to set you up with so you have a bit of an idea about where this is going. So in the next video I'm going to be tackling Euler's method which is the first one that we talked about and it's probably the most intuitive of the three that we have.